The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com. The outboard industry as a rule has a big gap between 115 horsepower and 150 horsepower. Here we have Evinrude's E-Tech 135HO that's designed to fill that gap. Let's take a look at the details and see how Evinrude has done with it. One of the biggest features of this engine is its ability to add more power and torque at the low end. Being an HO, it produces actual horsepower closer to a 150. Let's take a look at the features first. The cover comes off with three simple latches. Inside the shroud, all noise reduction foam. Right at the top, most important part, the EMM, engine management module. This is what controls all of the functions on the engine. Ignition timing, oil distribution, the winterization. Interestingly enough, it's water cooled. Water comes in and goes right on through and it's a heat exchange system to keep it cool. Now on this side, we've got a plug, a NEMA compliant plug, and this is what you can connect your eye command gauges to, do all your diagnostics with one plug. Now one big factor with this EMM is there's no break-in for the consumer to worry about. The engine automatically doubles up the oil during the break-in period and then once that's over, it goes back to normal levels all by itself. Alternators are belt driven and that means there's a chance for failure. This magneto flywheel is what gives the batteries their charge. It produces 133 amps gross, 50 amps for the boat. Here's a neat feature, this engine even has an isolator. If you have multiple batteries on board, the magneto will charge the one that needs it the most. Now everybody has to manage RF interference, that's not new, but Evinrude takes it to the next level. Look at these spark plug wires. They've got a metal shroud that's grounded, so that's going to minimize the RF interference even more. That's important when you have fish finders, you can turn up the sensitivity, same with your radar, any electronics at the dash. Now this is a big deal, this is not just a fuel filter, it's a fuel filter water separator. If water gets into the fuel, it sends a signal to the operator. Look at this, two oil distribution pumps. Primary and a secondary, the primary does the crankcase, the secondary takes care of the cylinder sleeves. Now these E-Tech injectors are a big deal, they're not the pump type systems that we usually see. These vibrate more like the speaker on your stereo and put precise amounts of fuel directly into the cylinder and the amount of fuel is controlled by the EMM. Now look at all the bolts, notice that they have washers milled right onto the bolts. That's an important factor but there's much more to these than that. These are stainless steel where elsewhere in the industry we see painted nickel plated steel. And I can validate that by seeing that this magnet is not attracted to them. What's more, all the aluminum components are low copper alloy for great corrosion resistance. Now to validate that corrosion resistance, there are no internal sacrificial anodes. There are three external ones and they're very easy to get to, very easily serviceable. Let's take a look. Here's one, two, and the third is right behind the prop. To take it even further, every aluminum component below the power head is coated with an electro deposition paint. And this steering arm is 304 grade stainless steel. Evinrude D-Tech is the only engine in the industry using that. Now here's something to look for on other engines. Notice these two stickers. This engine meets the emission standards for the European Union and a three-star carb rating without any need for recalibration. Here's a convenience factor. Freshwater flush couldn't be easier. Just connect a hose to this fitting right here, either run the water or run the engine. Either way, it works. Look at the throttle linkage. In the olden days, used to be a problem synchronizing the linkage to the engine. Here, there's no adjustment to be made, so it never goes out of adjustment. Evinrude calls this its SLE gear case for straight leading edge. You've got a primary intake and a secondary intake. Why would you want two? Well, if you're running through weeds, they're going to get wrapped around this gear case. You've got a secondary pickup right here. That's even more important when you've got something like a plastic ice bag wrapped around the gear case. Right here, this is the pitot pickup for your speedometer. Tube goes up, connects to this, and then goes right up to the speedometer at the dash. Let's talk about ease of maintenance. I live in the Northeast, and a lot of times you'll get an Indian summer with unseasonably warm weather and you want to get back on the water. Well, the guys that pay to have their engines winterized aren't going to be able to do that. With E-Tech, go ahead and run the engine again. You can winterize it yourself with just a series of key and throttle strokes and the engine will automatically fog itself. And that's also a critical factor for people in the southern latitudes for off-season storage. There's also no dealer scheduled maintenance for three years or 300 hours. Let's talk about how that's able to be done. There are three items that people need to do maintenance on in an annual basis. The gear lube, the water pump, and the spark plugs. But with Evinrude, the spark plugs are iridium tipped, and the ignition system is a fast rise inductive system for a long spark plug life. This gear case uses a synthetic gear lube that can hold 25% water in suspension without losing its viscosity. And the water pump is robust and oversized, so even if it gets partially damaged, it will still pump an adequate amount of water through the engine. 
Now let's see how this 135 HO performs. And by the way, that HO means that this engine produces 10% more horsepower than the decal says. So if you're looking for a 150 horsepower, you'll come pretty close for less money with this 135 HO. We tested the Evinrude E-Tech 135 HO on a 20 foot 1 inch deck boat with a test weight of 3,923 pounds. This is an ideal application for the 135 HO because deck boats are typically used for towing and water sports as well as for cruising protected waters. The key test numbers for towing was 4.4 seconds to plane and 7.4 seconds from 0 to 20. With a 14 and 3 quarter by 16 three bladed prop, our measured top speed for the test was 41.4 miles per hour with a fuel burn of 13.5 gallons per hour. Best cruise was measured to be at 3500 RPM and 22.7 miles per hour. That reduced setting showed us getting a fuel burn of 5.6 gallons per hour. With a typical 52 gallon fuel tank, that translates into an endurance of just under 8.5 hours while still holding back a 10% reserve. When cruising a lake in the evening with a crowd on board at just under 5 miles per hour, she burns 0.5 gallons per hour. After all this, it seems that we are truly left with two major considerations to take away from this test and tour. This engine produces more power and torque at the low end, and lower maintenance cuts costs both short-term and long-term. Well, that's my features walkthrough and full test of the all-new Evinrude E-Tech 135HO. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.